Welcome to the Woman Warriors Podcast, where we're working to help you call a truce with your anxiety. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Now, here's your host, Elizabeth Cush, LCPC. Welcome back to the Woman Warriors Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Cush, and I'm super excited about my conversation today with Robin D'Angelo. She herself is a woman warrior. She is connecting other women to themselves as well as to each other, creating gatherings and groups for her Wild Grace Collective practice out in California. But before we get started with that, I just wanted to say thanks again for tuning in. You can find us at womanwarriors.com, Woman Warriors on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can download my free guide for worried women, free meditation guide for worried women on the website. Go to womanwarriors.com. There is a link there. Uh, at the top of the page. Click on that and get your free guide. I will also be hosting mindfulness groups here in Annapolis for all those worried women who live locally. If you're interested and live in Maryland, you also can connect with me and I will be hosting an online group as well. So if you would like to be a part of those groups, give me a shout out to me. Uh, working toward doing a broader version of the group online as we go forward as a more of a coaching than therapy group. So if you're interested in that, reach out to me as well. You can find my contact information at the end of the podcast in the show notes, womanwarriors.com. So Robin D'Angelo is a licensed marriage and family therapist and the founder of the Wild Grace Collective, which is a community with the emphasis on unity for women to gather, grow, and heal together. Robin also owns the Happy Couple Experts of Orange County Group practice, where she and her team specialize in helping frustrated, disconnected couples learn to connect back to themselves and co-create love that's deeply healing and fulfilling. She helps people get out of their heads and into their bodies to get to the root of what keeps them from feeling stuck, lonely, and unfulfilled in life. Robin's work with women is, is as a fellow traveler to help guide them on their unique journeys to connect with their authentic selves. She uses a unique blend of traditional psychotherapy, neuroscience, and the power of creating sacred spaces that heal in her deeply connecting work. She feels most at home and grounded in nature, and if you're ever hiking Southern California, you can probably catch her on a local trail saying hello to her fellow travelers. My conversation with Robin was very connecting, and I felt... uh, Well, I just really enjoyed Robin's open and honest approach to her work and herself and sharing with us her story. So I hope you enjoy the conversation. Hey, Robin, thank you so much for being on the Woman Warriors podcast. Hey, I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Sure. I think it's kind of cool. Like we've got the Wild Grace Collective and the Woman Warriors right in one place. Oh, it just seems so right, doesn't it? (laughs) It does. It really does. It's funny. I've been, um, you know, you and I have, I guess, known each other through social media for Mm -hmm. some time, but I've been really enjoying your Wild Grace Collective posts Mm -hmm. on Instagram and just the stuff you've been putting out into the world. Thank you. It's it's definitely been a long time coming, just kind of bubbling up inside. So it feels so aligned to, um, yeah, to have these offerings out, out and about. So thank you for saying that. Sure, sure, sure. So if you wouldn't mind uh, just telling the audience a little bit about yourself and really what inspired you to do the work that you're doing. 
Yeah, thank you. So I am a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I have really been working with couples um, over the last five years. That's just been my um, my passion to help couples, you know, heal these broken and fractured and sometimes completely destroyed relationships. Mm-hmm. And I did that really deeply, passionately for you know these last couple of years. And I just, I just kept seeing and hearing familiar stories from the women that I worked with, you know, we'd kind of break off and maybe do a few individual sessions or that would come up just in the work with them. And I, I was hearing very similar stories from woman to woman. And I just kept hearing this complaint, um, of just being really lonely. Right. Mm. And, and it, yeah. and it would be expressed in different ways. And sometimes it was blaming their partner. They're just not available enough or they're not present enough. And and it, it took many different forms, and but I found out they were all saying the same thing, and it was like they were feeling this sense of isolation and, and disconnection, um, and they had this really deep desire, and it was interesting because they didn't really know what it was, right? Mm, it's yeah. just like... I, I feel angry and I feel kind of disconnected and I feel like I'm kind of floating and I don't know what this is. I feel like this fractured part of myself. Yeah. Um, and so the more we kind of dug into that, it was they were missing this sense of self, um, this sense of community beyond I'm a mom or I'm a business owner, I'm a wife. Like they just wanted more. And there was this sense of, I just feel kind of silly or selfish or kind of confused. What is this? Like what's Mm. going up inside of me? I don't understand what this is. My life is quote unquote fine. (laughs) Right. 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 But there's this thing that I feel like is missing and I don't know what it is. Yes. Yes. Or like this, this kind of um, yearning inside of me. And yet what in the world am I yearning for? What is this pull? Yeah. And so it kind of started there. And then um, over the last couple of years, you know, I went also through my own personal experience. You know, I was really focusing so diligently on building my practice and helping couples. And I was even mentoring my colleagues on how to build successful private practices. And, mm. you know, all of a sudden, you know, my, I guess I shouldn't say all of a sudden, but over some time, my own marriage failed. So right, right. here I was, um, this person that I had as my person for 13 years was suddenly gone. Wow. Mm. Yeah. So mm. um, there was definitely a freedom in that for sure. But it was all of a sudden, I felt this loneliness. Yeah. And it was, it, it was huge at first. And then over time, I've kind of experienced it kind of like fog. <laughs> Being down in Southern California, we get our May oh. gray and our June gloom, right? Right, right. Um, but it has just felt like this fog where sometimes I see it rolling in and I can go, okay, here we go. Mm. Here comes a holiday or here like Valentine's Day, here comes yes, an yes, anniversary. Yes. Or sometimes I would just wake up and it was so heavy mm. and so suffocating that all of a sudden I said, I, I get it now. I get what these women were talking about. So, you know, while I had a lot, I had girlfriends, I but they were doing their own thing, right? They were, Mm -hmm. they're married or married and kids or, um, you know, being a business owner, I had a very flexible schedule. So I had different times where I was free and available right? and no one else was. So it's this weird kind of loneliness. There was this weird yearning for connection. And yet knowing I had these women, but maybe they were in other States or just not a driving distance away. And Mm-hmm. Just, or just wor- yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Or they're working. They're at work. Like <laughs> right, right. They're just not <laughs> available at the times that you are, or exactly. whatever. Or they're involved in their own stuff and mm-hmm. don't have the capacity to connect with you in the way you, that you needed. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it was really those two things that kind of merged and happened, um, overlapped, and 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 it just really kind of helped me go, there's a big need here. And I don't hear a lot of people talking about this. Right. And I can tell you, you know, my, my 
primary clientele is women who struggle with stress and anxiety mm-hmm. and overwhelm. And there's a lot of lonely women out there right. that just are missing that sense of community, connection, yes. belonging. Yes, yes. And and it's I think it's especially hard when well, this is all I know, so I'll just speak for myself. When it feels like everything else around me feels successful. I have this great business. I have these clients that I am just over the moon delighted to be helping. I have great friends. I have family, right? And it's yeah. like, whoa, oh, yeah. how do we do this? Yeah. Do do so this? That is my next question, right? <laughs> so, right. So how do we do this? How do we make, yeah. and I find too, so I'm older than you, you know, mm. I'm approaching 60, which is crazy, mm. but I find too for women uh, and maybe it's women of all ages, but mm-hmm. even especially women who are a little bit older too, where it's like, well, how, how am I supposed to make friends now? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, you know, what's really interesting. I remember finding, I had a girlfriend who shared this with me because I, I was going through it and she wasn't, again, she's my best friend up in Sacramento. So we stay connected the ways we can. Mm -hmm. Um, but Brene Brown wrote this really great, um, I guess it's a blog post. I think everyone should read it. And it talks about the midlife unraveling. Yes. I don't know if you, yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. That landed so heavily yet gently on my heart in a moment Mm -hmm. and in a time when I needed that. And, you know, she talks about, you know, midlife, it's not about like the fear of death or anything. She says, you know, it is death. It's, it's tearing down all these walls that we spent our entire lives building. And that's like death, right? It's, you're at this point in your life where like, you're either going down Mm -hmm. (laughs) and you're staying down or you are about to endure a rebirth. Mm, yeah. Oh, right. So it's like, okay, we now have an opportunity. And so many of the women that I work with, I'm able to talk about this because I feel, I, I mean, I went through it. It's this idea of an awakening. Yeah. There's this awakening that happens. Um, and you ask like, how do we do this? I mean, such, such great questions. And I mean, yeah, there's there's the how tos, right? It's the practical, right? Exactly, exactly. There's the practical of like what 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 actually brings me joy and what enlivens me and what lights me up, and hopping online and trying to find groups that do that, right? Mm-hmm. There's like I love being out in nature, and so I remember googling like women's hiking groups, mm. and there's like babes who hike. There's you know there's there's all these. <laughs> I always thought that was so cute. Um, that is. Right? And and I'm finding, I love to travel. So I was looking on, you know, there's so many travel sites now that specifically, specifically talk about, um, you can't wait for your friends. Not everyone's in the same place that you are and you have more vacation time than they do, or you're, you're retired and your friends are not yet. Come join us. And it's wow. the coolest. Yeah. So I think just getting really curious about what's out there because people are offering um, kind of guided and, you know, um, curated experiences Mm -hmm. to bring women together. Um, And so I think just taking the time to search for that, uh, uh, something that I found that was really helpful um, because I wanted to create something like this for women, but I just thought, what's the language? What are people even asking for and looking up? Yeah. And something that your listeners might find helpful, which I did, was um, women's circles, mm, women's yeah. gatherings, right? Because this is in our DNA. Like we are wired yes. to circle up as women. Yeah, yeah. Our ancestors did this, right? You know, there's, if anyone's ever looked into like the red tent movements, right? Right. In the, the, the 70s, right? When this started, yeah. I think. But far beyond that of women gathering in these tents to celebrate and, and, and initiate women into, you know, young girls into womanhood yeah, and coming together. And so when you ask, how do we do this? I mean, again, there's that practical piece, but there's this piece of, we have to have at least one, at least one go-to woman mm. that we can say, how do we make this happen even from afar? 
And I will, I will just share, I found this app and hopefully this is helpful to someone, this app called Marco Polo. Have you heard of this? No, no. Oh my gosh. This, this saved my life. So hopefully someone listening to this can check this out. Marco Polo is an app, by the way, I don't get any like perks for for saying (laughs) this. No affiliate. There's no affiliate marketing here. (laughs) No, 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 no. Um, Marco Polo is, um, it's exactly what it sounds like, right? Marco Polo. It's Mm -hmm. a video. It's like a video chat app. So you can hop on and whoever you're connected to, it's like sending a video message, but it sends it to them and they can watch it either in real time or they can watch it later. Mm -hmm. But it, what it did for me, it was twofold. Like I said earlier, I found myself so free and available (laughs) when my friends were not. Yeah. I still needed to talk. I had to talk to someone. Mm -hmm. And I can only talk to my therapist so many times in a week. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a shame? I know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. Totally. Um, so it was a way to like verbally process what I was going through. And it was, mm. it's like a video diary. Wow. It was amazing. Well, and you know what I love about just what you said that like, all right, so my sister, who is one of my best friends and yeah. my best friend from college, both on the West Coast. So yeah, here I am on the East Coast. So the times <laughs> I'm thinking about talking to them, yes. they're either asleep or, yes. uh, you know, yeah. I'm asleep. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We're just missing each other. And this yeah, yeah. truly, this was just something that, you know, especially as I was going through my divorce and mm. the sorrow and the grief and then the bliss and then, right, like these, these roller coasters of, I need someone. Where are my women? Yeah. And they weren't local. And the ones that were, were working or yeah, like we said. So this really made it possible for me to feel as if I had my women all around me. That's so and nice. Yeah. And, and they, were, they would say, you can polo me if you need to just cry. Like if mm. you just need to sit there and cry and ugly cry, don't even worry about it. And I did. And I cannot wow. tell you how healing it was and how mm. held I felt. I was so surprised wow. that I could do that. But there's something that I hope, you know, even just one of your listeners says, I'm going to check this out. Me too. I'm going to check it out. I but, love it. But that's yeah. so great. That is really cool. Yeah. I And so, yes, connecting with others is like we're born and bred for that, right? We are born for connection. But why connection with other women? Why is that so key to our feeling like we belong? Right. Well, you know, I've done some research on this, um, but just speaking from a woman, I mean, you know, we as women experience things that we can't share with men. They just won't understand. Mm -hmm. There's no way they can. They're not wired. It's not in their DNA to even understand what it's like. And so having an experience where you can talk openly and freely, and sometimes it's not even talking. Sometimes it's just looking deeply into another woman's eyes Mm -hmm. as you are in pain and you feel her sending like this message of, girl, I, I got you. I know. There's something in our DNA that needs that, absolutely yeah. needs that. I mean, I remember reading this story, um, and I oh gosh, I wish I would have, <laughs> I wish I would have um, refreshed myself on this um, before before we hopped on here. But I'll just yeah. kind of share what I can about this. Um, it was a a village of women that used to go out, and they would gather um, every day and they would do laundry in the river that was alongside their village. And um, this was just a part of their um, rituals and their uh, routines, right? Mm -hmm. This is how they maintained um, their their laundry needs. And um, uh, part of their government came in and just said, oh my gosh, you know, we got a grant and we want to help you guys. We want to put um, washing machines in all of your living areas. And they thought, you know, we're going to help these women. We're going to help them feel more liberated and more progressive. And they do this and they go back and they revisit them like after one month, two months, three months, because they want to see how's this impacting? How has this really impacted your quality of life? And they're, they were so hopeful. 
And what happened is all of these women ended up after, I think it was like a three to six month just visiting, they were all depressed Mm. because it wasn't about the laundry. Mm. That was where they went to connect to their women, Mm. to talk about their sufferings, to celebrate the things that only women can find some joy and value and sacredness in. Mm-hmm. And it, that always stuck with me. It's like, it's not about the laundry. It's right. about what happens when women gather together. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. I, I, I had a conversation with someone recently just about this, like uh, how – Yes, appliances made our lives convenient, and yet <laughs> yep. it added to our burden as women. It really, did. it really did. It really did, and and we got to share that burden mm-hmm. when we were out in the river doing our laundry and being with our women. Yeah, it felt less like a burden because it was a connecting experience. Absolutely, mm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and again, I think that's at a soul level. I think that's at a DNA level for us mm-hmm. because what we know and what I've experienced is when that is removed, when that is gone, something happens within us mm-hmm. and it is devastating. And there's an emptiness there that we are not meant to walk this earth feeling well, and it's so interesting to me because I think about, um, well, for when I when I grew up, there wasn't a lot of social media stuff. No, no. social media stuff. Yeah. Like we would connect by meeting in somebody's backyard and play yeah. games. And, you know, there was all this connecting time away from home, outside. And I think about women in our lives now, today, that there's so little space like that, the laundry to gather Mm -hmm. just as part of the routine that it, it makes sense to me. You know, every, I, I do a spring and fall sort of mindfulness group for women here Mm -hmm. in my office and people as the spring comes, they're like, when is the group? When is it starting? Like I need this connection with other women to, to be scheduled in my life. Absolutely. They, we do. And I, what I've noticed too, and I'm, I'm going to geek out like on the neuroscience of it because I love yeah. this part of it too, is like yeah. our nervous systems need recalibrating and our nervous systems need to be flattened out because they are activated all day, every day, no oh. matter what you do as a woman. Mm-hmm right? We are wired to walk into an environment and to immediately scan it and scan for what needs to be done, scan for what's out of place, scan for danger. Mm. That's what we are wired to do. And it's so funny when I, you know, I work with couples and I, <laughs> I talk about, you know, you know, when your partner who is typically male um, steps right over a pile of something and you're like, oh my God, did, did you seriously <laughs> not just see that what? Right. or or leaves their shoes like yes. right in front of the door right there like, <laughs> like what, what just happened how and i and i have to say you know can you know men yes we are they are evolved and they have the capability and the capacity to learn to be more aware of things however a man's um, kind of wiring his default wiring is single focused and i always go back to the time of like caveman days. What was his job? His job was to go out and get the buffalo. Right. Because he needed to feed his entire tribe, entire tribe, village. Mm-hmm. So his job, he actually had to unwire the parts of him that um, he might see a little bunny rabbit run by. Oh, I could get that. That would be an easy snack. But wait a minute. That's not actually for the, that won't feed the entire village. Oh, there's a small deer, but that won't actually. So men actually had to wire their brains back then to say, do not be distracted by things. You have one goal. Mm, Yeah. And and what were we doing while they're out hunting? We were back in the village, keeping an eye on the kids, watching the fire under the pot of the soup that we're making for the whole village later while picking berries, but not the dark red berries, the light red berries, because it's January, right? Like this is how (laughs) we are. (laughs) Gathering sticks to make sure the fire doesn't go out, doing the laundry down by the river. Yeah. Yeah. Making sure the kids aren't drowning. (laughs) Exactly. So so I say all this Mm. because our nervous systems 
have been wired to be on all the time. And when women gather, when we gather purposefully, when we gather in sacred space where we shut the door and we say, this is our time and we are leaving all of our stressors, all of the demands that are on us every day, we are leaving that outside of this room or outside of this area, this space for the next X amount of time something happens in us. There's an alchemy that happens within us so that we not only ground, we get rooted, we recalibrate so that when we do return to our environments, it's almost like we are renewed Mm -hmm. and we need this. Mm -hmm. We need this. And, and, you know, without it, we are frying our nervous systems. No wonder women are exhausted and wiped out. And as soon as the kids leave for college, they're like, I'm ready for a divorce and I'm, I'm ready to go just do my own thing. Right, right. Everyone leave me alone. <laughs> right. I'm closing the door. Right. Yeah. Totally. Mm. Yeah. So, so, so important, this connection with other women. But I think you touched on something, maybe it was in, I think so, yes. Yeah. So in your introduction that I read, that the, your bio, you know, the other side of that too is that connection with yourself Yes, and really finding that true authentic connection within so mm-hmm. that, I mean, for me, I will speak from personal experience in my own healing journey that... Um, having experienced trauma in my life and it wasn't addressed properly or at all. Right. I sort of, my default was to kind of be protected all the time. And so it was hard for me to make those deeper connections Mm -hmm. uh, at different times throughout my life. And so through therapy, I've been very, working very hard on this. (laughs) And it's so invaluable, but it's hard work. It is. Connecting with yourself, you know? I mean, we're so self-critical. We're so judgmental of our, you know, whether it's social media stuff, I'm not doing it life right, or just the internal, you know, who's judging me for whatever it is I'm doing. Yes, yes. And I just, I have to say, I'm totally with you. And Oh, so much, again, of the work that I do with women, um, whether they're partnered or not, is about getting back to themselves. You know, I specifically talk about um, finding your way back home Mm. to you. Mm -hmm. And um, again, same through my own experience and through my own healing journey. When I was just completely disconnected from myself, I had spent... 13 years being what I thought was the best wife ever, the mm-hmm. best wife ever. I, I thought I was doing everything right, but I was never connected to myself. Everything mm-hmm. was about others, others, yeah. others. Yeah. And when we do that, we are so doing ourselves a disservice because mm-hmm. we don't even get to know who we are and what we desire and what we want. And I think that's why when women come to work with me and they're, they're confused about it. And they're going, I don't understand what this yearning is. Mm -hmm. It is because we are so disconnected from what our internal desires and needs as women, as individuals, as humans are. And when I was going through that, I found this book that changed everything for me. Mm. And I now use it when I run my, um, Wild Grace Women's Gatherings, and the women love it. And it is um, Rebecca Campbell's work. It's called Light is the New Black. Mm. Um, And it says it's a guide to answering your soul's calling and working your light. And, you know, while it might not be for everyone, what I found it did was it gives all these beautiful prompts that just get you asking yourself questions that go deeper and deeper and deeper so that if you don't have that kind of relationship, which many women don't, you know, yeah. I, I am, I am so blessed to have most of my friends are therapists. So we do this <laughs> frequently. <laughs> um, but most women don't have those deep um, soul connected, heart connected conversations. And this book really gave me um, the opportunity to start asking myself those questions and to get real and to get vulnerable mm-hmm. and to start finding out 
what is it that I'm yearning for? So for any of your listeners that are maybe feeling kind of that nudge of like, there's got to be more, or what is this? Um, that was a great place for me to start. Mm. I will definitely include a link in the show notes oh, for yeah. that, but I'm going to look at for it for myself too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really, really magical. Mm. So if you were to, you know, as I said, some of the women in my practice really struggle with finding that deeper connection with other women. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be from a place of, uh, I think sometimes there is this sort of sense of competitiveness with other women that can get in the way of connection. Yeah. Yeah how do you help women sort of be more like I think about it in, in our therapy terms mm-hmm. and, I, and I guess it's just business, like sort of mm-hmm. abundance, like that yep. we all have gifts. We all, mm-hmm. but how do you communicate that or? Yeah, that's through? a great question. So, um, I mean, that was something that, that I, to this day still struggle with. So first of all, I normalize like our brains are kind of wired to do this. Our brains are wired to look around, to assess, <laughs> and to make sense out of what's around us. Mm-hmm. Now we have internal critics and internal dialogues, right? That are oh, yeah. um, mm-hmm. that are not always accurate, and that are coming from a place of fear and inadequacy and trauma and pain. So I think it's what I would tell women is just to have compassion for that part of yourself that starts to compare and let, and it's almost like talking to that part of yourself and Mm. talking to her and just saying, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. Um, That person in your opinion is way more beautiful or way more successful or way more fill in the blank Mm -hmm. than you are. Okay, great. Okay. Do you want to do something about it? Do you want to be sad about it? Like, what do you want to do with this knowledge? or this opinion. What do you want to do? Because I think so many women try to just get rid of it and then they feel guilty. I know I shouldn't think this way and they get kind of harsh. Yeah. And I say, move toward that. Take yeah. a good look at it. And, and what I notice is the closer we get to the things that cause us pain, typically the less pain they cause us because we change our relationship with them. It's pretty amazing, right? Right? I mean, it's so yeah. counterintuitive when everything in us says, run away, like get away from that thing. She's way <laughs> yeah. too beautiful. She's way too smart. She's way, like move away from her. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it, I would invite women who struggle with comparing to move toward that idea and that thought and that insecurity and just allow it, give it permission. Yeah. Okay. So you feel this way. Okay, great. Now what? Now what do you want to do? Do you want to feel different? Do you want to sit here for a little bit? Right. What do you want to do with this? Right? Like we think we have to do this big, you know, soul depth exercise. And sometimes it's just allowing space for it and yeah. deciding, okay, I sat there for a minute. That felt shitty. <laughs> I'm going to move to another. I'm going to, I'm going to take a look. You know, everyone says, look at the positives and what, what do you love about yourself? And I don't think you always have to do that right away. Give yourself right. the permission to sit with the, like, this feels shitty. Mm, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Well, and as you said, that oftentimes, like, just being with that part that is either hypercritical or whatever, giving it a voice can mm. tame it as well, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I do love that. And I think, too, again, I will go back Um because just recently, um, there's a second book that this gal wrote that I that is kind of the next next step. It's more more questions, but there was an exercise in one of them that I recently did that it was incredible. It it talked exactly about this, it, and it said who who are you envious of? Who are you jealous of? Write down all the people. Write down um, all the things, and what what is the lesson in it? And what can you let go of? Mm. And what does this provide you an opportunity to heal? Mm. And it was just so beautiful to look at the parts of yourself that are jealous of all these other fill in the blank, women, men, friends, businesses, and really examine what is this teaching me? What do I, what 
I have an opportunity here. Hmm. What, what can I heal right now? Oh, it's my sense of not feeling good enough. Okay, great. Wow. <laughs> Didn't think about that, right? So it's, sometimes it's just giving us the space to um, observe and assess, like, what does this actually mean to me? And do I want to let it go? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Lots, mm. lot, lots of growth opportunities, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, I think, yes, if we're willing mm-hmm. to sort of put down our guard and step toward these sort of, whether it's pain points or difficult feelings, it can really open up a lot of growth. It really can. And, and you mentioned that earlier about, you know, sometimes when we have our guard up um, and it gets in the way of authentic connection, mm-hmm. Doing this work and learning more about yourself and why you believe the things you do and where they come from and if you would like to heal them or if you're or if you'd like to continue to hold on to them and the more work I've noticed that you do in that realm, those guards start to melt away in a good way, right? I mean, we're still appropriately boundaried and we right. we are kept safe. Um, there's something energetically that happens. There's a shift. There's an openness that I've noticed others are connecting more freely and easily with me. Mm-hmm. That's not and, right. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing yeah. when that happens. And I, I did never understand it. I thought I'm always really friendly and I'm always saying hello to people and smiling and, and I didn't understand what's, what's, the barrier here. And it wasn't until I started doing this deeper work and getting to know myself and getting to love myself more, Mm -hmm. all the parts of me, those lonely parts, you know, the parts that strive, the the jealous parts, um, the parts that feel like a fraud sometimes, all of that. Yeah. People really started being able, they, they would make comments like, wow, you just, you seem more relaxed or you seem just more open. Yeah. Because I was. Right? (laughs) And I had no idea it was closed. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) I have this great, I have this great quote. Hold on one sec. I have to read it. Yes, please. So I was listening to a meditation on Insight Timer yesterday. I love that app. Mm. Me too. And her name was uh, Kelly McMahon. And she said, Mm. the heart of one. No. Yes. The heart of one (laughs) lights and heals the hearts of many. And to me, I was just like, oh, like if, if I can be, if I can approach the world with an open heart and yes, appropriate boundaries and all of that, (laughs) but with an open heart that that can also connect with others in a way that's light and healing and beautiful. It really, it really is. And and the part I love most about that is I think it I think if it hits you the way like you just read it and I just went, oh, I think that's an indicator that we need to practice and make it a practice of staying open. Mm-hmm. Even yeah. when we think we're the most open, there's always a little bit more to share with the world from a heart-centered space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Right? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, Robin, um, I know you and mm. we've talked about a lot of sort of tips and resources too throughout mm. the conversation. But are, is there anything else that you would want to add for women who might maybe struggling with making those connections or feeling connected to themselves? Yeah, I think one thing that <clears throat> gets in the way of us doing this is just is fear right? Oh yeah. So much fear. Um, I'm afraid no one's going to like me. I'm afraid I won't like them. I'm afraid to really be myself. I'm afraid this isn't going to work anyway. Um, Like there's so much fear when it comes to just reaching out, Mm -hmm. to showing up to a group of women you have no idea who they are. I'm not going to be good at this thing. I'm going to get hurt. I'm going to get hurt. They're not going to be authentic. Mm. Um, You know, how much am I, I, 
you know, when I first started doing this, I would be so giddy and I, I would leave with kind of what I would think, oh my God, a total vulnerability hangover. Did I just, did I overshare? Was I too excited? Did I, you know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. There's all these, these elements of, are they going to like me? Mm -hmm. Am I safe with them? Can I really truly share my truth without being judged? And so what I want to say to women is the answers to, um, can I do this without being judged is no, (laughs) you judged, you just are just know that you're going to be. And the ones who judge you as, wow, I want to move closer and I, and I connect with her and I align with her, that makes it worth it. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's that saying in in business, if you're trying to make everyone happy, you make no one happy. So it's not about trying to be friends with everyone. It's showing up authentically as yourself with all your quirks. Don't try to wear a mask when you show up. Right. (laughs) Just be your, your, I always say, I'm like, I'm such a nerd. I'm a nerdy. I I show up as my nerdy self. (laughs) And um, whoever is drawn to that, because that's my truth, Mm -hmm. we are going to get along. And whoever is not, I'd much rather know right away than invest in a relationship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And authentically. And then once I start to show myself, they go, wait a minute, this, or, you know, or vice versa. So yeah. for the women that, um, again, if you're, if you're wanting this, I just say, please, please just reach down into that depth of your spirit, of your heart, where all your courage hangs out. And walk into that space. Go look for, you know, meetups and women's groups and whether it's at, you know, a church or a community center or, um, you know, there's just so many things out there now that as scared as you might be to show up, the worst thing that can happen is you go home having experienced something, (laughs) something new, right? Right, right. And yeah. and so I just really encourage women to, like I said, reach down into that space and grab that courage gently with both hands, with a loving heart and say, all right, we've got this. We're going to try this. Maybe it's one thing a week, yeah. one new thing a week and just do it. <laughs> mm, I think that's a great idea. And so Robin, how do people find you? Yeah. Thank you. Um, Mm -hmm. So I have, I'm down in, um, I don't know, I should say not down. I'm over from you. I'm the (laughs) West Coast. (laughs) Um, I'm in um, Laguna Hills. So Orange County, California. So I'm smack dab in the middle of um, between San Diego and Los Angeles. And so I have um, a website that is specifically geared towards women that I work with. And that is the Wild Grace Collective. And so that's where people can find um, information about how I work with women, both in psychotherapy, as well as I provide non-therapeutic women's gatherings Mm -hmm. where they're small, they're intimate, and we are doing the work of connecting to self and others. And we include sacred ceremony and I just have to say, it's been an incredible experience to watch these women leave and say, hey, you want to grab dinner tonight? I'm like, yes. Oh, nice. nice. Yes, this is what I wanted to create. So mm. um, the wildgracecollective.com. Um, and then I also have that on Instagram. And I'm always posting about events and just some inspirational um just words, quotes, experiences to remind women um, that you're not alone and that desire that you have to connect, like that's there for a reason. So listen to it. Right. Um, And then I also have my um, psychotherapy practice where we support couples and that is thehappycoupleexperts.com. Nice. So I found in both places. Yeah. Awesome. That is awesome. Well, I will include all of that in the show notes so people can find you easily. And I just want to say thank you so much. This was really a wonderful and I don't know, deeply connecting for me Mm -hmm. conversation. So I appreciate your taking the time to be with us on the podcast today. It's been my pleasure and thank you as well for having me on and just giving me the opportunity to speak to our fellow women and our sisters out there. And 
my hope is that every woman listening really finds that sisterhood that she is craving because we're out here. (laughs) We're here. We're waiting for you. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Thanks, Robin. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Woman Warriors podcast with Robin D'Angelo. What a great conversation. I really enjoyed her honesty and sincerity and authenticity, and I hope you did too. As I said, she and I have been acquaintances on Facebook for a long time, and it's always so nice to connect. Uh, I get to see her face to face because we do a little video ahead of time, but so nice to connect with her in conversation that was live and it was great. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I know how hard it can be to connect with other women. And I also know how important it is for us to feel that sense of community and belonging. So I will include all the resources that she mentioned in the podcast in the show notes that you can find at womanwarriors.com and you can search her name and that will bring up her episode with all the resources. Again, if you're interested in the mindfulness groups for women, the worried women's mindfulness groups that are happening here in Annapolis in the local area or in Maryland, you can reach out to me through my website, womanwarriors.com. Or you can just reach out to me to tell me your story. What's your woman warrior warrior story? Well, I hope all of you have a terrific week. I hope that you will find some connection with yourself and others this week, especially other women. Ciao for now from this woman warrior. Thanks for listening and subscribing to the Woman Warriors podcast. Music was written and performed by Andy Cush. If you'd like more information on this episode, you can find the show notes, the resources shared today, and links to the guests' profiles at womanwarriors.com.